dirtying up the frame, a term gone quite viral lately thanks to the Batman, one of the best looking movies ever. And today we're leaning into the details of what makes this specific cinematography term, what does it mean, and lens choices, and just how to recreate this within your everyday shooting, even on a scene like this. If you look closely, I'm actually dirtying up the frame. It has different meaning, but the main is putting a lot of elements in your frames that make it dirty. For example, in this instance, I have my little bar bottle right here, and I have a little bit of foreground on the right of the frame, left of the frame, and I'm sitting right here, and you know I'm lit up from a very specific way. So this frame, you could consider it dirty because of the foreground. So. It means that you add foreground on just elements or even natural elements. For example, if it's raining, you have droplets of water. If it's dirty, you have dust on your lens. All of these elements, you're dirtying up the frame, making the subject pop up more because the subject is going to be either clearly in focus with everything else out of focus or, or everything else will be in focus while the subject, even though it's the main subject in the scene, be out of focus and this is something that we've seen in this epic scene from the Batman which is such a beautiful piece of cinematography in my opinion which I actually tried to recreate but we didn't get lucky with the sunset so yeah this is kind of what we got but doing up the frame is adding elements and creating a different composition rather than something clean and beautiful. This newly rediscovered term, if you will, is really changing the way movies are made today. From the Batman to Joker to June Part 2, all of these movies, if you look closely, all of their frames are, or most of it, are very dirty. Which, to me, it's very exciting because cinematography is just getting to a level where creativity has pretty much no boundary and adding this level of cinematography and these beautiful scenes and adding this rawness but in a very cinematic way it's really stepping up these movies to be honest every time i watch a movie even even bad boys i watched a couple of weeks ago and the whole cinematography of it compared to the older ones it's just such a higher level and it's beautiful and it's to me it's a lot more entertaining that the movies back then because i really enjoyed the cinematography part of things obviously the story is the main character always in every movie but having such a deep intense beautiful raw cinematography to me it's stepping up the level and i'm so excited to watch joker 2 coming up in just a few months so the next thing i want to cover is how do we recreate this within our own production you just need to be able to understand how to get creative with your framing pretty much that's all there is to it get creative with your framing put stuff in front of your lens just don't be scared of angle the camera in a way that you wouldn't angle it normally. And these are all little things and bits that I try to remember whenever I shoot. And this sequence that I shot with my girlfriend Mel in uh, the city here in Bali, in Denpasar, it's a perfect example. I wanted to have something dirty. I wanted to have a very moody, city, sunset, blue hour vibe. And I reached that by Obviously there was not story, it's just her kind of on a rooftop and then walking around, but it was just an example to show you guys that if you get creative with the shots for what you have around you, you can get beautiful looking scenes even on a low budget. One of my favorite shots from everything we shot was actually this one of Mel walking through the market, shot kind of like a low angle and you see all the people going around her. She wasn't perfectly in focus. That wasn't on purpose. I actually just missed focus because I was shooting on a 35 millimeter Nisi at T1.9. So yeah, I just missed focus. And I was holding the camera kind of from the top of it to get this weird kind of movement. And um, the second favorite shot, it's actually this one through the mirror of this motorbike. I actually scripted this because I've seen it in a few movies lately. And I was like, I want to recreate this. And um, it was probably the only scenes that I really, really wanted to recreate. It's just, you know, her stopping and we see her through the mirror of this bike and then she walks away again. I think that's just a, such a cool composition and he recreates everything that dirtying up the frame means. 
Lens choice is definitely very important when it comes to dirtying up the frame. The older, the more vintage, the more character some lens has, the better. For this specific sequence, I only use two lenses. I use the Nisi 35mm because it's one of my favorite wide lens and it's very clean, but I just really like the 35mm look and I didn't have another 35mm, so I ended up using that one. And for the rest of the shots, I use the Helios 44-2, which is my favorite lens ever. And I just made a video about it. If you haven't watched it, click up here, go watch it. It's this lens, it's, it's, there's no term to describe it, but having a vintage glass, having something that adds character to the scene, really, really, really improves this whole terms of dirtying up the lens. Even a beautiful clean lens like the Irix 45 millimeter that I'm shooting this one right now, adds such a nice, cool character because it's designed for cinema, it's designed for movies. So all of these lenses compared to classic Sigma or Sony or Tamron lenses, which, you know, nothing wrong with that, but you will get always a very clean look with those lenses. While well, if you use cine lenses or vintage lenses, you get this beautiful cinematic characteristic look that you wouldn't get otherwise. So definitely experiment with your lenses, experiment with vintage lenses. And I'm actually so happy because in about a month, I'm gonna go back to Bangkok where there is one of my favorite vintage lenses market in the whole world. It's a huge warehouse and I'm very excited to go there and buy a ton of stuff. So yeah, you'll be seeing a lot more vintage and, you know, kind of interesting looking films and videos coming up soon. So leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for the support. Moving on. Once you chose the lens and you picked up your little set that you want to shoot with, all you got to do is finding interesting compositions. I said before about the mirror, I said about Mel walking through the market, shots from level angle, but also just find things to frame your subject or whatever's happening with. Like for example, Mel walking down the stairs, I shot through the rail of the stairs above. So you get this like weird kind of like, oh, mysterious kind of look like, oh, she's walking past there or her on the phone just by this little river and I framed the hands with the phone again with the rail she was leaning on. So all of these things add perspective, add depth and add interesting composition within your film. So definitely don't always hold the camera from the same angle, don't always hold the camera low or high. Just look around you, place the subject where you want the subject to be and then just walk around and try and find the best composition there is for it. Going back to the Batman, they actually used a detuned set of Ari lenses, which means that they picked these beautiful Ari lenses and they kind of broke them. <laughs> Detuning means that you're taking the lens and you kind of take it apart and you make it a bit weird looking. And this is something that the Helios already have, which has this kind of anamorphic looking bokeh and anamorphic looking frame, but a lot of anamorphic lenses, for example, have a bit of distortion and this is something that the Batman has. If you look at this movie, at the edge of all the frames are pretty much blurry because the lenses they use, they were dead tuned in a way that everything in the middle of the frame is always sharper than everything towards the edge of the frame. And obviously we don't really have access to this unless you're lucky enough to have a unlimited budget or you can detune your lenses. But what you can do is add a lot of vignette and add a lot of blur in post-production towards the edge of the frame, something like a spiral or just like a edge blur to the frame, recreating this effect. Just be careful not to overuse this and add like a tiny, tiny bit and uh, yeah, hopefully this will help you recreate this effect in post-production. The last point that I talked about before is that you want your camera to interact with whatever is happening in the scene, like rain, like dust, like anything like that. Adding elements like that will make whoever is watching your film, your video, your reel, whatever you're making, whoever is watching, if the lens is actually interacting with the surrounding and with what's happening. It will add such a big element of realness. And to me, this is one of my favorite things to do, especially when it's raining, just letting a few droplets on the lens and then keep shooting. You get these weird flares, these weird artifacts on the lens that really adds something unique to the video. And these are all the points that I wanna talk about and share with you guys on how to recreate the cinematography term, dirtying up the frame within your everyday movies. Obviously, this is something very close to me because I always love foreground. And as you can see in this specific shot, 
I frame these up in a way that I think this looks pretty good. So yeah, thanks so much again for sticking around until the end, guys. If you did like this video, leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you next week in the next one. See ya.